For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah Olivieri. I'm a number one international best-selling author, former executive director, and um, creator of the Impact Method. And I love helping nonprofits change the way they operate so they can make a bigger impact without getting overwhelmed or burning out. And today we're going to be talking about why your donors aren't who you think they are. I'm really excited to be talking about this topic. And um, I'm going to have a favor to ask of you during this call as well. So if you're with me live, I'm going to give you a link to a survey that I'm running around donor education. Um, and I would really appreciate it if you could take a quick moment today um, to fill out that survey. I've put the link in the chat now and I'll fill it out later. I mean, I will put it in again later. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I have my handy index cards with me today. Um, you know, there's old school, right, presentations where you read off index cards. Then um, there was new school where we went to PowerPoint slides. And here's the new new school version where I'm going to use the index card as my slide on our video communication. So your donors, who are they? This card today represents your donors. You can tell because I wrote donors on the card. And I want you to think about, when you think about your donor list, maybe it's small, maybe it's big, um, but in any case, imagine you had a big list of donors if you don't. You probably feel like, yeah, I got my list of donors. They're here to help us and support us. But here's the problem. See. Um, I heard a great statistic um, that framed the attrition rate of donors. That's how many donors typically only give once and then are gone, right? So attrition rate for most organization of donors is 76%. That means here's your happy pool of donors and actually... Actually, these, this is who, this is who's really that group of people who you think of as your donors, who you can count on, who you're hoping you're going to give year after year. Um, that's this, not this. So we just took your big list and we turned it into a really small list um, or proportionately small. So. What, do, what is this? What does this mean? This means that these are your real donors. And I'd like you to stop using the word donor after this training because donor is very transactional. I want you, and it's confusing because we think about our list of donors, people who gave a donation, right? I want you to reorient yourself to this group, your, I'm going to call them your supporters. I have my other fancy presentation tool here, my little Sharpie. Um, so your supporters, because they're giving you um, support. So these are your supporters, right? We'll see if that comes into focus for you. There we go. Those are your supporters. So who are these people? Who are these people? You can take a guess if you want in the chat. Um, who are these people? Well, I don't have exact data on who these are, but let's just say most of these people, we'll break it into thirds. I'm gonna break my, my card into thirds again. Most of these people, this many, these are people who gave to you once, right? And then they're gonna be gone. I would call these people pre-donors, pre-supporters. But you're going, but wait, but they gave to me, so they're a donor, right? I want you to think of these people as people who tested out whether or not they wanted to be your supporter by giving a donation, and they're seeing what happens. Right, so if you're wondering why this card from the original donor card is so small and this card is so big, it's probably because you don't have many activities 
to turn these people who tested out whether or not they wanted to be a donor into these people who are sure that they want to support you because they have something really important in common with you. You guys share the same mission. You and your supporters share the same mission. Now, probably your testers, I'm going to call them test donors, your test donors, they probably also share the same mission, but they're not convinced that they're going to align their money with you yet in order to achieve that mission. So they put a little money in the bucket just to find out. I'm going to call them test donors. So we had your original... Here's your original card. Let's see if I can paste it back together. And just a teeny bit of them are your true donor list, your true supporter list. A big chunk of them, they're not really your donors. They're your test donors. They're testing the waters. So you really want to make sure that everybody who tests out being a donor becomes a true supporter. So what about these guys? These guys are new. Here's my little card. Doot, 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 doot. So these new guys are coming. I saw this. I was in a conference last week, and I heard this question. The question was, what about donors who are coming from, like, Facebook fundraisers or peer campaigns? How do I make those my returning donors? Well, the problem with those, and I'll call those peer donors, peer donors, I'm writing it on the card with the Sharpie. The problem with the peer donors is they're not even your test donors. They are your supporters donors, right? So peer fundraising campaigns, Facebook campaigns, they're good to bring in some money and to start to warm people up. But what's happening when somebody runs a Facebook birthday fundraiser for your organization, you're, that's your supporters, right? They're running that fundraiser for you. And the people who give, they're not your donors and they're not even your test donors. They're your supporters donors. Most of these peer donors gave because they share the common mission of wanting to make your friend, your supporters happy. So you have a long way to take these peer donors. You have to turn these peer donors into test donors and then into supporter donors. So that your donors are not really who you think they are because originally we thought we have this big list of donors, but in fact, it's only a small chunk right now. And according to the data I've just heard, only roughly 24% of your list is your real list of supporters. And the remainder are a combination of your test donors who need to be turned in to real supporters and your peer donors who are actually your donors, donors. And that is my super short micro training on how to reorient your thinking on who your donors really are.